High Adventure. Tonight's story by Norman Partington is entitled MacPherson's Dam. sensation. That's Benson and Hedges' special mild. Introduced August 1977. Since then, sales have doubled and redoubled in one of the most dramatically successful cigarette launches in recent times. Smokers everywhere are moving to mildness, yet staying with taste. Enjoying the mild sensation of Benson and Hedges' special mild. means a better life for you. Building your money gets your plans off the ground. That's what the NBS can do. Cause we're the money building society and that's the place you need today. For yourself and your kids, for your dreams and your plans, we're behind you all of the way. NBS, all of the way. NBS, the money building society. Wat niet in Zuid-Afrika? Wat niet? Diet Coke. En jy sal het drink net vir die smaak daarvan. Maak kennis met Diet Coke. Jy sal het drink net vir die smaak daarvan. Leer gezond met Diet Coke. Dit is die een van Coca-Cola. En de cola smaak is suiver. Genot net vir die smaak daarvan. Net vir die smaak daarvan. Diet Coke. There isn't anything I can do about it. I'm simply the site construction engineer responsible for building the thing. The government have given you ample warning, and I know well they've paid decent compensation. Compensation? Compensation? Look, I promised my father I'd come back from Canada when he died and take over this land. Land that's been in our family for five generations. Five generations. It's my land now. I'm married here, I'm raising a family here, and here I'm going to stay. Look... Why can't you just build your blasted dam on one of the other valleys? There must be a dozen around here that are suitable. Be reasonable, please. I didn't choose the location. This is a government decision, not mine. And my instructions are to build the dam where they say. You've had plenty of time to protest, nearly two years, actually. And don't you think I haven't protested? I must have sent a hundred letters to them. Been to see them four, five, six times, or what's happened? Nothing. Sorry, Mr. McPherson, they say, but the dam's needed for future water supplies and hydroelectricity or, or something. Mrs. McPherson, can't you make your husband see reason? You've had six months warning to clear off this place. You can see where the level of the waters are now, just lapping at the foot of your boundary post. And as the dam goes higher and higher, it'll cover the house and everything. I've tried to tell him, Mr. Hardy but he won't listen. You can see how he is. Oh, don't apologize for me. I'll have nobody making apologies on my behalf, and if you want to speak to anybody, Hardy, you speak to me. Very well, Mr. McPherson. I shall speak to you and give you plain warning. Everybody on the other farms in this area have been gone months ago, and you're the only one that's left. I've been to you several times and tried my best with you. Now, the simple thing Don't is... Don't you try to bully me, Harding. My parents, grandparents, great-grandparents farmed here, and I intend to continue doing the same. Well, that's where you're wrong. You shall have four days in which to clear out the place. I'll even send removal vans for you to get to your sisters lower down the valley on the other side of the dam. We'll attend to everything and free of charge. But, Mr. McPherson, if you have made no attempt to move by the end of the fourth day from now, then I'm handing the case over to the police and they'll forcibly evict you. Get out of this house, Harding. Get out! And if you or any policeman puts foot on my land again, they'll get a charge of buckshot to clear them off. Good day, Mrs. Harding. I'm sorry it's happened this way, but I'm afraid you'll have to make your husband see reason. But he won't, Mr. Harding. And he means what he says. Oh, it's a pity. However, good day. Oh, Chuck, don't you see? You can't beat them. We'll have to go. The compensation don't they pay Don't argue up... with me, woman. This is my land, and it's going to stay my land, even if I have to tear that dam down with my bare hands. Now you're talking foolish, Chuck. Foolish? 
You've lived with me all these years and don't know me yet. Well, let me tell you something, Eileen McPherson. I'll still be here and the land will still be here, but that damn won't be. I'm not going to listen to that kind of talk. The children will be home from school soon. And I'm going to start getting dinner ready. And I'm going to see Wilson. I'll be back in an hour. Well, don't come home drunk. You know what that Wilson's like. Of course I know what he's like. That's why I'm going to see him. Here. Thanks, Chuck. I will have another. But don't think it's going to bribe me into doing what you want, eh? <laughs> I don't intend to bribe you with beer, Wilson. But with money. Nice, crisp notes. The kind you always like. Yeah, but what do you want for it? That's my business. A monkey business, if you ask me. Whatever it is, just you concern yourself with helping me to get it. Now, here's half now, and half when the stuff's in my hands. Oh, for money like that, I'd blow up the Bank of England for you. <laughs> hey, uh, you're not going to try anything like that, are you? Oh, don't be a fool. Have I ever behaved like a criminal? No, but you're going to be one tonight when we break into that cabin. See it? Yeah, I get it. Come on. You got all your kit with you. Keep quiet, you idiot. There's always a watchman on guard. But you Use see. your common sense, man. You don't think they'd leave a dynamite store unguarded, do you? Well, I'm not having anybody injured. Nobody's gonna be injured. I know the routine of this place like the back of me hand. At one o'clock, you'll nip off to that hut at the other side of the field for his hot cocoa. And he stays there for half an hour. That's plenty of time for us. Now, nah, just sit quietly. It's only just gone midnight. We've got to wait a while. He's going off now. There he is. Well, give him a couple of minutes, and then we'll move off. What's that you got in your hand? A yeah, special kind of cutters. They'll get through the asp of the padlock. But won't the watchman notice when he comes back? No. Because when we've got what we want, I'll put a new padlock on. You'll never even know the difference. Now, come on. I think it's safe now. All right. <laughs> Don't be so blasted noisy! You hold this bag while I have a go at the lock. Okay. They must have made this of high-grade steel. Let me get the edge of the cutter underneath. There, that's it. Is it coming? No, not yet. Oh, it's a tough one, this. Here, here. Come on, come on, come on. Let me have a go. I've got a few more muscles than you. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, just put the corner of the jaws there, see? Okay, yeah. It, it, more against the curve. Like that, yeah? That's it. Mm. Now, grab the ends and put all the weight on it you can. <laughs> We've got it. Now, open the door. You got a torch? A torch? <laughs> Be a fool. You can't start flashing lights around here. You'd have half the guards running all over. Now, just feel carefully to your left. They'll be in the wooden crates. It, it, it's all right. I got one here. How many sticks do you need, Chuck? I want four groups of five sticks each with fuses. That many? Now, now listen, Chuck. Just what crazy idea have As you... As I said before, that's my business. Yours is to get the stuff and make it up for me with fuses, okay? Okay. But I can tell you this, McPherson. I've never been a particularly honest bloke in my life... But I got a sick feeling in my stomach that you've got me involved in one of the biggest crooked capers I've... been paid well enough for it, Wilson. Now get the dynamite and the fuses. What time length do you want the fuse, Chuck? Uh, let's think. Uh, I, I think a, a one-hour fuse on each. That should do it. Right. A one-hour fuse it is. Four units, uh, five sticks each. Chuck, you have enough explosive there to bring down that damn there building. Hey, hey, the dam. <laughs> nah, not even you are crazy enough to try that. Why, you'd sweep away about a dozen houses on the other side of the wall if you did that. Hey, hey, hey Chuck, you'd, you'd better tell me now before I do any more. It, it isn't a damn wall, is it? I am not a murderer and I'm not crazy. But what I want that dynamite for is my business, so get busy and finish off. You were out late last night, weren't you? Where did you go? Oh, looking at the damn wall, throwing rocks at it. If you're going to bring that up again, I'm going out and I'm taking the children with me. What's so new about that? It's Sunday and you always take the kids out, so where are you going? Down to your sister's. We'll have lunch with her. To Catherine's? Her house is on the other side of the dam, isn't it? Never thought of that. 
Well, why should you? You never thought of it before. What I mean is, well, 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 get down to Catherine's and bring her back here. She's all by herself down there, and it'll be a change for her to spend the day with us. What, with you and your foul temper? Oh, will you stop irritating me, woman? Just get in the car and bring her back here. Half an hour there and half an hour back, but make sure you're back here by 12. Why 12? Because, because I want an early lunch today, that's why. to place the dynamite. The site's always deserted on a Sunday, not even a watchman until night falls. I'll put the four units near the lowest part of the wall where it's just about two feet above the level of the water. When that goes, the pressure of the water will do the rest. I'll be able to see the car returning from the wall, so the moment it comes, I'll light the fuses. Saunter back to the house as if I'd been for a walk, then wait happily for the big bang. <laughs> I'll teach them to try and drown my farm. Eileen, how nice to see you. How's Chuck? Oh, moody, Catherine. He's in a real foul mood. Oh, he's not still on about the dam, is he? <laughs> really, Eileen, the sooner you get him away from this area, the better. Hey, hey, uh, let the children play outside, then we can have a long chat, just you and me. Oh, we can't stay long. Just brought the children for the drive. We thought you'd like to come back to our place for lunch, you know, just for a change. Oh, but Eileen, I can't... I... I've got everything prepared for you, as usual. It's been cooking since earlier this morning, and in about an hour it'll be ready to serve. But Chuck insisted you came back. Eileen, I think it's time you started taking that brother of mine in hand. He was always a difficult child at home, but my parents couldn't do a thing with him. Do you know, he once lit a fire in the sitting room. Oh, no. He said he was experimenting to see which newspaper burnt the quickest. Oh, I know he's only a kid, but even a kid should know better... I think we all rather hoped he'd calm down a lot more when he got married. Oh, he's not all that bad, Catherine. He's terribly generous with me and the children. It's just that once he gets an idea into his head, nobody can move it. And he'll persist with some scheme right to the end, even though it's obvious to anybody else that it's no good. Well, just let him be on his own today and get over his bad temper in an empty house. No, I, I can't. I, I daren't do that, Catherine. He'd be furious if we didn't go back for lunch. No. Quite definitely no. I've got a super lunch I've been preparing for you and the children, and I'm not going to have it spoiled just because my brother's in one of his moody tempers. Don't you understand? I dare. Look, no, Kylie, if it worries you so much, I'll take your car and drive over. Have a few sisterly words with Chuck, then bring him back here to lunch as well. Just keep your eye on the oven and turn it down at uh, exactly quarter to twelve. And for goodness sake, stop fretting. I know how to handle Chuck McPherson. Just give me the keys of your car, then Then you stay here and enjoy yourself with the children. I I'll be back in an hour. Well, I still don't like it. Anyway, here are the keys. Thanks. That one's the ignition. Mm. Oh, and be careful with the brakes. They're not all that good. I think they want relining. Just tamp it down with a bit of mud. And that's that. The last one. Now, to lay the fuses so they can all be lit together. Fine. Well, Wilson, old chap, you seem to have done a good job. Now, the minute I see Eileen's car coming along the road, light the fuses, then one hour later, bang, 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 the center of the dam goes, and... That sounds like her now. Well, that's her, all right. Dear obedient Eileen, bringing the kids back for lunch. Right, now, Mr. Harding, you and all your government blighters, here's your nightmares all going to come true. Now, just light the fuses. One. Number two. Number Oh, burning nicely. Now, for a casual half hour stroll back to the house. A peaceful half hour for lunch, then boom! <laughs> oh, up she goes. If you like smoking cigarillos, the best is El Cano. 
Filter-tipped Elcano is made from the finest cigar tobaccos, including leaf from Java and the West Indies. For a pleasant, new smoking experience, try a pack of Elcano cigarillos today. You'll like them. Elcano, ideal for smoking anywhere, anytime. Elcano. If you're as big as a house, small as a mouse, tall as a wall, round as a ball, or just the average girl next door, active pantyhose are guaranteed to fit perfectly every time. So if you're big as a house, small as a mouse, tall as a wall, round as a ball, active pantyhose by Cameo are guaranteed to fit perfectly every time, no matter what shape you're in. Well, 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 if it isn't my dear brother coming home to lunch. Hi, Kelly. Nice to see you up here for a change. How you been keeping? Fair. Where's Eileen? Is she in the kitchen with the kids? As a matter of fact, she isn't. Well, well, what's all the mystery? Is she in the bedroom making the beds or something? No. Nope. Oh, come on, Kathy. Stop behaving like an elder sister. Where's Eileen? Preparing to have lunch with us in half an hour's time. Good. Well, give her a shout, Kathy, and tell her I'm back. I doubt she could hear me 20 miles away. 20... Now, cut your fooling, Kathy. I'm not fooling. She's at my house with the children, and you're coming back with me to have lunch there. At your house? But she can't be. She can't be. For heaven's sake, Chuck, stop being so hysterical. She's at my... Look, don't you realize the dam? She'll be killed. The two kids. Here, here, let me get you a drink. And for heaven's sake, calm down. Oh, you fool, you fool. I tell you, the dam's due to be blown up. The valley's going to be flooded, and Eileen and the kids are there. Frankly, Chuck, I think you're going off your nut. The dam's all right, and they certainly don't stop blowing up. Look, until... give, me, give me the car keys, give me, and, and stop preaching at me. You're... You're not serious, are you, Chuck? Of course I'm serious. I put the explosives there myself. They're due to blow in half an hour. You what? Explosives? Have you gone crazy? Please, Kathy, please, stop wasting time. Now, look, drive back home and get Eileen and the kids out of the valley. I'm going back to the dam to see if I can stop the fuses. It'll be quicker if I drive you to the dam. You can't. There's no road that a car can use. I'll just have to cut across country. Now, hurry, woman! It won't start, Chuck. I'm coming. Try it again. You've got the choke right out, you idiot. It, it, it's a strange car to me. You, you've got a lot to answer for, Chuck McPherson. You've got a lot to answer for. <laughs> I'm in it. My, my heart's pounding like crazy. Oh, it's crazy. Where's my watch? My watch. Oh, ten minutes. Only ten minutes before it's due to blow. Only ten. The brakes. Oh, merciful heavens, let the brakes go down. Uh, I'll be killed. I know I'll be killed. Chuck, Chuck, why did you do it, you crazy idiot? Five miles yet to go, five miles. I, I, I'll never do it. Oh, so that's why he insisted Eileen brought me back to the house. At least he thought of that. He knew mine was the only house in danger from the dam breaking. Get out of the way, get out of the way, it's an emergency. I'll never do it, I'll never do it. Wilson, what brings you around here on a Sunday morning? Quite apart from the fact that you're trespassing on the dam site. Morning, Mr. Harding. Oh, I had nothing better to do, so I thought I'd come and see how the building was getting along. <laughs> Coming up quite nicely, isn't it? Yes, reasonably so. But the wall's got to go up another 40 feet before we level off. About another year to 18 months should see us doing the finishing works. Hmm. I see the water's filling up on the other side. <laughs> no danger of it spilling over. Oh, no chance. 
If it gets too high, we just open these temporary sluice gates and feed off the surplus. Have it's quite possible. Hey, doesn't that look like a man in the distance, Wilson? Climbing down that hillside? Yeah, I'd better put my specs on to see that. Uh, now, where? Look, just follow my arm where it's pointing. Uh -huh. Can you just see it moving? I think I'll take a walk over there. Whoever it is, he's trespassing. You want to come along? Yeah, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind at all. Maybe I'll be able to persuade you to take up an honest living on the way. I could do with an explosive expert. <laughs> Not me, Mr. Rowdy. I've played about with dynamite enough in my life. Hey. Hey, hey doesn't I'm, that look like... Mac I'm sure it is. It's McPherson. What the devil is that fool doing around here? Probably up to mischief of some kind. Come on, let's walk a bit faster. Well, I thought he'd moved off his property. Yeah, he should have been gone months ago. He's got two more days. He's made no effort to leave then. The police will evict him. Oh, where on earth is he going to now? I think he's heading for the wall of the dam. Oh, merciful heaven, please, please let me be in time. Oh, Chuck, how could you do it? The, 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 these brakes aren't working properly. I, I'll never get round those bends. Oh, no! <laughs> Eileen, Eileen, oh, my leg, Eileen, I tried, I tried, oh, oh it's hopeless, Eileen, Eileen, help, you're all going to be drowned, drowned, drowned. It is McPherson, crazy ass. McPherson, what the devil are you doing up there? The dam, the dam, Mr. Harding, the dam set to blow. Dynamite! Oh, what's that supposed to mean, Wilson? Sounds as if he's raving. Come on, give me a hand with him. The dam. There's dynamite in it. It's fused to blow in five minutes. Come on, help me carry him, Wilson. I think he's gone out of his mind. No. No, I don't think he has. I, I, Chuck, can you hear me? Chuck, where did you put it? They'll be killed. They'll all be killed. They'll all be drowned. The dynamite. You've got to tell us where it is, Chuck. Tell us, you blasted idiot. What's all this, Wilson? What's McPherson raving about? The dynamite. Dynamite. Eileen, the children. Where did you stash it, Chuck? What time's the fuse set for? Do you mean there really is dynamite in a dam? Wilson, tell me what you know. This crazy blighter asked me to get him some dynamite. And I thought he wanted it for clearing some boulders off his ground. You got McPherson dynamite? Well, I... In the dam. Four. Near, near, near the support. <laughs> He's out. He's gone clean out. Mr. Harding, we've got to get out of here. You're not getting out of here, Wilson. You're coming with me to the dam. We've got to find that explosive. Come on. No, no, I'm not coming, Mr. Harding. It's going to blow up soon. Wilson, you're coming. Because if you don't, I'll see that you get 20 years in jail as an accessory to murder. <laughs> hey, you two, stop all that noise. And stop picking those flowers out of Auntie Catherine's garden. She should be here in a minute. Turned the oven down 15 minutes ago, but if she isn't here soon, I'd better do the rest of the lunch myself, or else it'll spoil. Hmm? An accident, Mommy! What's that you say? An accident? Where? Now, just you stop telling fibs. Oh, you mean you went to the top of that hill and you saw it? It's a blue and white car, Mommy. A blue and white car? couldn't be, Catherine. It couldn't be. You two stay here. I'm going up to see who's in that accident. Jump, Wilson. It's only five feet. Now, that's it. Now, come on and run. It's only another hundred yards. Hurry, man. Run faster. Eileen, over here. Oh, praise heaven, you're safe. The children, where are the children, Eileen? They're all right, Catherine. Now, just keep still while I look at that leg. Get them. Get the children quickly, Eileen. Chuck's dynamite at the dam and it's going to blow up at any second now. Get what? the children. They're, they're in the path of the floodwaters. Chuck has done what? It dynamited the dam. The water's going to come down in flood. Oh, no. It'll sweep away the house, Eileen. Get the children to save them. Oh. Only 
50 yards. 50 yards. Come on, Wilson. We've got to get there before... Oh, help! It's going! Keep down, Wilson! Wilson, come back! The wall's going! I'll be all right. Run. The children! Oh, what madness. Eileen. 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 Tend you to be armed. I didn't, didn't tend. Gunston, superbikes at ball door. You scratch hard round the bend, turn it on to 270 Ks and you're out front, untouchable. You're close to the things men rate great, like Gunston Toasted. Gunston cigarettes are made from the best tobaccos a man can get for that rich, rewarding, toasted taste. Get closer to flavor with Gunston Toasted. Waves already halfway down the valley. I live in a children. They're gone. I know they're gone. The water swept away the house. Oh, my children. They're gone. Mummy. Mummy. We're over here. We came after you to see the accident. We thought it would be all right. Uh, Mummy, did you see all that water? It took away the whole house. Wasn't it really terrific? Wait till I tell them at school. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.